I'm going to discuss about single slit diffraction. I'm also going to prove that this happens because light is a wave. So this diffraction happens because light is a wave. So let's see the implications of single slit diffraction. Suppose there is only one opening. So this is like suppose if there is a cardboard, if you just punch a hole, when you look from side, this this much is the opening. This is what we have represented here. And there is a screen. Ordinarily, when you pass plane wave front into this, if light travels like rays, like straight line, all the light will reach up till this point and there is a brightness here. So bright means I'll just draw something like this. So there is a uniform brightness on the screen. Suppose if this is the screen, this part is this. Suppose this is a circular part. No. So there will be a circular bright spot here. This is over. If light behave, if light is not a wave. But actually what happens here is suppose if there is an opening, then you have to send parallel light rays. So suppose if there is a lens from here, exactly at the focus, if you keep the light and you get a plane wave front. When light passed through this, we had expected something like this. But what is formed on the screen is something like this. That means we had expected illumination only up till this portion, but there is light here and here also. And after that, there is one more bright fringe here, one more bright fringe here, and one more dark fringe here, and one more dark fringe here. After that, it is um, negligible because when the center bright spot is having this point I0 intensity, this first bright spot is having only I0 by 22. This is the first bright and this is the first bright on the other side, first bright. And this is I0 by 22. And the second brightness is only I0 by 61. This second brightness is also I0 by 61. So how this looks like this, suppose if there is a, this is the screen and the central brighter, bright maximum, we expected only up till this level, but this central bright maximum is slightly larger in size. This is number condition number one. Then there is a minimum here. There is a minimum. That means dark spot. There is a dark. Then the next maximum. So the next maximum is surrounding this. And then the next maximum is surrounding this. So the central maximum intensity is I0. This first ring intensity is I0 by 22. The second ring intensity is I0 by 61. So what is the our interest is if what is the size of the central maximum? What is this radius? That is what we want to find. The radius is starting from the center. This is where the minimum happening from the center to the minimum, from the center to the minimum is called radius of the central maximum. From here to here, this minimum, this is radius of the central maximum. So the total distance is diameter of the central maximum. So this is what we are going to find out. Also, we will find another thing from the center to this end. What is this angle from the center to this end? What is this angle? So the total angle 2 theta is called angular width of the central maximum. Angular width of the central maximum of central maximum equal to 2 theta. If this is theta, this is r, distance between the slit and this distance is screen which is d, then you can say that theta is r by d r by d so theta equal to arc length by radius this distance d so it is r by d because theta is small this theta can be written as tan theta and tan theta can be written as sin theta because theta is small because theta is small tan theta or sin theta can be written as r by d our interest is to find this r by d so we are going to find this using or comparing this with Young's double slit experiment. So I want your, I mean, 
fullest attention here so because we are going to enter into the main part of the single slit diffraction theory okay if you want just have a look at it see how Young's double slit experiment suppose in Young's double slit experiment there is source 1 source 2 slit 1 slit 2 distance between them is d there is a screen usually this distance d is far greater than this distance d suppose light enter here and light from here if this part p is going to be bright means you have to find this light travel shorter distance this light travel longer distance when you draw a 90 degree thing this is the extra distance traveled by the second light that is called path difference and if you uh, hang i mean if you initially those things i discussed there if you want you can just go if this angle is theta this angle is theta because this is theta 90 minus theta and this becomes theta so this distance this look at this right triangle this is a right triangle in this right triangle hypotenuse side is d opposite side is delta so we can write sin theta equal to path difference delta extra path traveled by the second source by d so d sin theta equal to delta this is the condition for bright fringe the bright fringe condition delta is n lambda what is the meaning of n lambda d sin theta equal to lambda r2 lambda r3 lambda r condition for bright fringes if d sin theta can be writ i mean for dark fringe instead of lambda it has to be lambda by 2 instead of 2 lambda it is 3 lambda by 2 or 5 lambda by 2 and so on so this part can be written as either 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2 or 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 or in general n plus 1 by 2 into lambda by 2 uh, n plus 1 by 2 into lambda so these are three things now how i see the uh, single slit suppose there is a single slit light comes here and you are keeping a screen here and this is where the central maxima is formed the this is the first maximum and here on this side first maximum and this is a second maximum and here it is a second maximum so very important thing so light from here and light from the because like two sources similarly if you break this entire slit into two parts for every light wave starting from here there is another light wave starting at a distance half the, suppose if the total opening width is a we call it aperture aperture so for every light wave there is another light wave starting at a distance a by 2 half the aperture size and it will go there for this to be minimum let us try to find the path difference here like here we made a triangle here also you make a triangle right triangle so this is the path difference delta this is the angle theta because if you assume this angle is theta this angle is theta that is discussed in ydsc experiment there you check out and opposite side delta hypotenuse side a by 2 so you'll be writing sin theta equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse side then what is for diffraction we are getting a result like if a by 2 sin theta equal to delta then if delta is lambda or 2 lambda or 3 lambda they are all condition for bright fringes if delta is lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 are condition for dark fringes because the central maximum end when the first minimum begins this is the first maximum this is the first minimum because it's a full bright here is where first minimum so here path difference is lambda by 2 so apply in this condition so a by 2 
sin theta equal to since this is a first minimum first minimum the minimum path difference is lambda by 2 so it is lambda by 2 cancel that we are getting sin theta equal to lambda by a so this first minimum here condition is lambda by a the second minimum condition is 2 lambda by a then this is lambda this is 2 lambda here the path difference is only half the wavelength so here the condition for first bright is lambda plus lambda by 2 by a this is 3 lambda by a so let us try to rewrite those conditions what we are getting this is a condition for first minimum second minimum 2 lambda by a in general if there is a single slit and there is a diffraction pattern formed on a single slit i explained what it is and if this is the kind of pattern formed on a screen this condition lambda by a second minimum condition 2 lambda by a first minimum condition lambda by a second minimum condition 2 lambda by a these are all sin theta values okay the first maximum condition 3 lambda by 2 by a this first maximum is 3 lambda by 2 by a the second maximum is 5 lambda by 2a this second maximum is 5 lambda by 2a so in general in single slit diffraction single slit diffraction bright fringe condition bright fringe condition sin theta equal to n plus 1 by 2 into lambda so first bright fringe means sin theta equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 i mean a sin theta okay a sin theta because here we said a sin theta equal to lambda right into lambda that means 3 by 2 lambda our first bright fringe is sin theta equal to 3 lambda by 2a what about the second bright fringe a sin theta equal to 2 plus 1 by 2 so that is 5 by 2 lambda r which means sin theta equal to 5 lambda by 2a so condition for dark fringe in single slit diffraction is that a sin theta equal to here you look at it a sin theta for the first minimum we said a sin theta equal to lambda so a sin theta equal to lambda for the first minimum this is for first minimum a sin theta equal to 2 lambda is for second minimum in general a sin theta equal to n lambda for nth minimum so this is the condition for bright fringes this is the condition for dark fringes so in the next video i'll just quickly summarize this and do a couple of problems